Hi, I'm Larry Cox for DIY Road Cases. And today we're just gonna go over a little bit of information about caster boards. Even though we cover this in depth in our flagship DVD and, and the manual and the flexi case design tool, uh, just a little bit of brief information about caster boards uh, for folks who have some common questions that we've seen before. Caster boards are generally made with a three quarter inch hardwood plywood. Uh, but you can also use a good quality standard three quarter inch plywood as well. Just make sure that it's sanded on both sides and has you know a decent quality to it, not a rugged exterior type finish. Home Depot and Lowe's also both carry pre-cut sections of three quarter inch hardwood so that you don't have to buy uh, a, a full four by eight sheet. And this is also at a very affordable price. So that's also a great option when you're working with caster boards. Now, Regarding the width of a caster board, if you're not going to use a caster board that covers the entire bottom of the case, which we'll get to in a second, if you're going to use like individual caster boards, the one um, rule of thumb that I want to tell you is that you should allow for about two inches of wood on either side of the caster plate uh, so that you've got enough surface area to install your, your caster plate for your actual individual casters without splitting the wood or getting too close to the edge. So about two inches on either side. And then of course the length of your caster board is gonna be governed by the actual dimensions and the size of your case. Now, in general, caster boards may be configured in one of three ways. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, a large board that covers the entire bottom of the case. If your cases are gonna be getting forklifted a lot or uh, you think that they're going to be hitting curbs and, and, and doorway, you know, door jams and things like that. I suggest a full caster board on the bottom, which protects your case and adds extra, you know, bit of protection for your contents as well. I also suggest that if, if it's going to be getting forklifted a lot and you know this, I also recommend a steel piece of panel uh, on the exterior underside of the uh, of the caster board to also additionally protect it from the wood getting chipped from the forks constantly going in and out you know underneath it. The second common style is two caster boards one at each end of the case and each one of those caster boards runs the width of the case underneath and accommodates two casters one on each corner. This is what is demonstrated and seen in our flagship video. That's kind of what I was talking about, that if you have an individual strip like that, you want to allow two inches on either side so that the plate, when you put the, the, the bolts in, it has enough meat on either side to grab into so you're not splitting your wood. The third style is four individual caster boards, just large enough to accommodate each caster. So maybe a, a square that's like this big around I mean this big square and then the caster right in the center of it and then that caster board gets mounted to each corner of the case. Um, but in any of these three options, please remember to allow room for mounting holes. So you not only have to be cognizant of needing the four holes for each caster plate to attach your casters to the caster board, but you need to allow room for drilling holes to attach the caster board to the actual bottom of your case. Now, with regard to the length of the hex bolts used to fasten the caster boards or the casters, this will depend on your case wall thickness. Obviously, if you're going into your, your caster board, then you, you're, that's kind of a given. You're gonna have a T-nut on the top of the caster board, four of them for each caster, and then your bolt goes right into that. Your caster board, which is three quarters inch thick, depending on your case wall, half inch, three eighths, or quarter inch, you'll wanna make sure that you get a hex bolt that is long enough to go up and connect to the T-nut, but not too long to really perforate and extend to the inside of the case when you install it. You wanna try not to have too much of the bolt sticking up on the inside of the case if possible. Uh, a, a little protrusion, you know, if it, if, it's, if it comes in just a little bit, that's okay because most cases are going to have foam over the top of it. However, you don't want it protruding too far 
as to penetrate the foam or that when the foam compresses a little bit from whatever you're putting in the case, then that bolt ends up hitting whatever's inside. So you want to try to minimize how far it protrudes into the case as much as possible. Now, if you use our 5 16 T-nuts and matching hex bolts on our website that we sell to attach your casters and caster plates, you'll be fine. But if you're going to go outside the, our store and maybe buy them from Home Depot or Lowe's or your local hardware store, just make sure you're accommodating for the thickness of the case wall, the thickness of the caster board, and your caster plate, just so that you're not running short with your bolt either. So it's kind of a fine line, not too far inside, but it's got to be long enough to catch and grab and, and tighten down nice and tight. Okay, that's a little bit of a tip regarding the caster boards. From DIY Road Cases, thanks and we'll see you on the next one.